Okay guys, so what we're doing next is we got the water pump, oil pump, we've got the rear main seal on. Next we're gonna put the head on, but before we can do that, we need to put on these studs. So let me show you, so show them the studs here. Turn it this way, there we go. Um, one side actually has a hex head on it. This takes a SAE uh, tool here. It is, let me make sure here, turn it around. It is a 3 16th. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put Molly Lube down here on the bottom, just enough of it here. So I'm also teaching Colton here at the same time. So go ahead, yep. That's good. And put her down in. You can also use engine oil with this as up to you, whichever you prefer. Now you can use this tool then to put that down in. Now, one thing you guys, you're not torquing this down. If you read the book and you go through it, you're not torquing these down. You're just putting them in until they feel hand tight. So let me feel it here, Colton, because you haven't done this before. Yep, so do it hand tight and they say do a little bit more. So that's good. Now you want to follow that same process across the board. Okay, next what we're doing, we're installing the ARP washers. Now, disclaimer, we've got the studs in. They are hand tight. They are not cranked down by any shape or form. They are just hand tight. You literally go in, twist them. We, I call it the two finger, use two fingers to get it tight. Once you feel it, you can back off. Now, you don't have to use Molly Lube on those threads like I did. I've done it without, I've done it with, I've done it with oil, I've done it without anything. I, in my opinion, it doesn't hurt anything. Now, when you do the nuts, we will have to use that Molly Lube, but since we have extra, extra I have extra too. It doesn't hurt to have it, uh, so I went ahead and used it there. Now, we're going to install the head next, but you need to install the washers for the studs first. If you put the head on over those studs and then try to install these washers, it will not work. The washers will not go in. So you need to put the washers in first. So Colton, you wanna drop down one in there for them so they can see it. Oop. And you just line up, that one went in perfect. So let's do another one, do this side. And again, now you're just gonna repeat that process, guys. He's gonna drop those all in, and then we'll drop the head on. So guys, now that he's got all the washers in, we need to put on the GTE head gasket. This is a twin turbo head gasket. There's the part number. So Colton, there you go, go ahead and take out the packaging. That only goes on one way also. So while he's doing that, again, I'm gonna show you guys a part number there. Make it a little bit easy. Um, you put this on because one, it's a better gasket, it's a little bit thicker. When you're running a stock NA engine, you're already running high compression. Uh, and on top of that then, you already milled the block or milled the head. We milled the head 5,000, was it five or 4,000? 5, 5,000. It was 5,000 that had to be uh, milled off the head to get it truly flat, which isn't ideal, but it ended up working. So go ahead then Colton and put that on. You can have this installed ahead of time too. Nope, you're wrong ones. Over there you go. Yep, take your time, and it should line up perfect. Now there is overhang in certain spots for a reason, so when you go to pull the gasket off, it's a little bit easier. So it is lined up. Now what Colton is going to do is go ahead and lift the head up, and I'm gonna help guide it on here with him. So, you got it, all right. Right there, yep. And make sure all the washers in, so you wanna check for all the washers are on because it could push them out. All the washers are on. So guys, the head is on. Golf clap for you, Colton. Golf, oh, wait. Golf clap? Golf clap, wait. <laughs> 
You gotta watch that movie now. I'm trying to I'm trying to get Colton into early 90s, late 80s movies. He's a young kid, but I'm gonna get him into them. All right, guys, so next what we're gonna do here, we are going to put on the nuts to all the studs. So we're gonna use some of this Molly Loop here. So you're gonna put a dab of it here, so you're gonna take some and put it inside where the threaded area is. Yep. All right, once you've done that, then you wanna start spinning it down. You're gonna use this as a way to keep it from, well, locking up on you and it torquing properly. So you're gonna do each one of these like this. So you gotta kinda of hold the nut and go ahead and try to put on the stud. It is not as easy as it looks, is it? Yeah. Alright guys, now that the, all the uh, nuts are on, we're going to do the torque sequence. So guys, there is a torque sequence to putting the head on. All the nuts are on, so we got one, two, then three, four, all right, then five, six, and then so on and so forth. So you want to follow that torque pattern the whole way around, and he's going to follow that. Now you're going to do this to three levels. We're going to start 35 foot-pounds, then we're going to go up to 60 foot-pounds, and then we're going to go up to 85 foot-pounds. The book or ARP recommends 80 or goes to 80. We're going to go a little bit past that because I want to make sure this head does not lift off. Uh, so, yeah, yeah just, I always go to 85 just to get that little bit extra. It won't hurt. You can go up to 100 foot-pounds. You actually look online. I think they say 100 now for some of their studs. We're going to be going to what the book sent us today. So in the actual description, it said 80 foot-pounds. We're going to be going to 85. We got the digital torque wrench here. You got to turn it on. So turn the on button there. And right now it's set to 35. I'm sorry, that's upside down. Let's... Do that here, it's 35. And again, he's gonna start with number one. And let me set the camera up and we'll start off here. All right guys, so go ahead and Colton's gonna start with the first one here and be careful. Now you're gonna put the foot on, it's gonna start spinning. Nope. One, two. Yep. This is Colton's first time, guys, too, so I mean, he's learning here. It'll beep solid. Keep going. Once you hear beep solid, that's how you know. All right, I can turn this back on. What we're going to do, Colton went ahead and put up the 60 foot pounds. Colton, can you show him? Come a little bit closer to the camera, please. Right now we're up to 60 foot pounds. This is the second time around. So again, we're going to start with one, two. Again, following the same process again. So Colton, go ahead and start with one there. And you're going to probably have to hold the... There you go. There's one. And go to the second one. There you go. And repeating the process. Guys, now we're going to 85 foot pounds. This is your last pass, okay? This is the last pass you're gonna make. So Colton, go ahead and he's gonna put on number one here. Did it go? I can hear it. Seen 85? 
Okay. Yep. And again, guys, he's repeating the process. He wasn't holding it there long enough, so. The reason I go a little bit extra is I don't want to take any chances on, um, you just don't want to lift the head on these. It takes a little bit on, he's putting, you can see it takes a little bit more strength and this is a big bar. Usually I use a 3 8 I'm using a half inch this time around, guys. So it usually takes a little bit more umph. Uh, I figured I'd talk to you, I know I had music before this, but um, it takes some umph to put into this. Uh, hopefully you have a friend, you can buy a torque wrench if you don't have one yourself. It is nice to have this. Also Tools supplied this one for us for this video, so big shout out to Also Tools. Uh, I've never had a digital torque wrench and it is quite nice as we can just type in exactly what we want. Uh, it goes in uh, tenths of an increment, so it's quite nice. And you can see here, it's nice when you don't have to listen to a click. You hear a solid beep, you know you're good to go. All right guys, so the head studs are tightened down now. They're 85 foot pounds. Next up, what we need to do is we need to install the buckets for the head here before we put the cams in. I made sure that we had these organized, so I use these plastic containers, label them exhaust and intake, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and the same thing for the intake side. Now, Colton, you can come on over here and start putting those in. Number one for me is always the beginning here. So this is the exhaust side. This would be number one, two, three, four. So if we have it here, so number one here would go right here. So you wanna take that. Now it takes a little bit of wiggling. These things are covered in oil too. So yeah, it takes a little bit of finesse, yes. Yes, they are not easy. So pull it out, just, yep. Oh yeah, it's not fun. So we're doing number two now. Again, these the tolerance says he's like, man, are they really that tight? I'm like, yes. And like, he's like, you gotta like force them in. No, they literally just, once you get it perfect, you just gotta take your time. It takes a little bit of finesse and they'll just fall in. Again, just there you go, that one's in. Oh, make sure, wanna make sure all the buckets are on or all the, um, oh God, I can't think of the right name right now, so I apologize, guys. Take your time and put all those in. So now we've got some Brian Crower 272 cams. And uh, right here, we'll go ahead and pick it up the whole way here. Right here, we have the exhaust side cam. And the way you know this exhaust side, you'll see for the GE, you'll see this little, I guess we'll call it a gear on this side. Uh, that's how you know it's the exhaust side. The intake side does not have that. So another thing you guys are gonna wanna do is inside of here, I went ahead and I'm gonna grab the, show you here. I went ahead and used some assembly loom. This has moly graphite in it. I prefer this stuff. You see some guys using the red stuff. I prefer this. So you see the moly graphite in there. It's like a gray color. Uh, don't be scarce with it. I lack, I loaded it in there. Uh, you want to make sure that's in there is very thick. Another thing you want to make sure of guys when you're doing this. So right now we don't have a uh, crank gear on this. We're still waiting for one to come in. Not a big problem. So what I'm going to do is uh, Colton, I'm going to spin this here. Make sure that screwdriver stays out while you hold that cam gear. So I'm gonna spin this here. And as I spin this, 
you can see the screwdriver go down. We want to set the number one cylinder to TDC. So you'll see it go the whole way up and you'll feel almost get to a limbo area where it like bottoms out. And you see right there, that is like TDC. Now, I don't want to keep it at TDC because technically these Brian Crower 272 cams are non-interference, but just to be safe, as we're spinning these cams around today, checking everything, checking for clearances, I want to put a little bit down past that. So I'm going to click, click it again here and right there. I'm going to put a little bit down past it. This way we have the ability to make sure we're not hitting whatsoever when we're turning these cams up and down uh, because those valves could possibly hit. I don't, they shouldn't, but just to be safe then, sorry. So Colton, go ahead and put the exhaust cam in. Again, that gear goes to the front and it's not going to sit in there perfect. Um, if you can spin it around some, you can try messing with it, but it's not going to sit in there perfect. And this is where another thing I'll show you guys here in a minute, uh, we gotta be careful. So go ahead and grab the intake side here. Again, guys, uh, like I showed you in the video, I've made some comments. Colton is learning, so I'm going through with him. So if you see a mistake or you see something going or see like, hey, why do you do that? He needs to go up further, brother. There you go. Um, you guys got to understand that he is still learning how to do this, and I'm trying to guide him the best to my abilities. So right now, both the cams are in, and you'll see they're kind of wonky. Well, no matter what, you can kind of move them some, and you can level them out. But no matter what, it's going to be pressing in some areas. And here's where people make a big mistake. What can happen is if someone takes one of the cam caps and they crank it the whole way down, you can crack these cams in half. Yes, I've seen it happen, especially on the big 280 cams where you've got a much, much higher duration. Uh, the lobes and stuff are much more severe. You can actually cause some serious issues. So to prevent that from happening, you need to put the cam caps on in an even manner. So I'm gonna put the camera up here and I'm gonna show you guys how to do about, go about that in a proper manner. Okay guys, so again, I'm gonna put some Molly coat on the top of these just to be safe, um, you know, again, because we're gonna put the cam caps on this. And it doesn't hurt to have this in excess. Um, yeah, I just, I prefer to have more than less when it comes to this stuff. And if you wanted to, you could put a glove on. Honestly, when you put the caps on, it'll move it around. So I'm not worried about it. And put some there. And there, up front, and here, and there we go. Okay, now one other thing guys, before we put these cams in, they are dedicated for these cam caps. So there is an intake side and there's an exhaust side. If you wanna show one of them here, Colton, which one are we showing here? Are we showing the intake or exhaust side? Exhaust. Okay, so bring it up here to the camera. Stop right there. Um, if you guys can see here, it's kind of hard to, it should say E1 there. So for exhaust one, so that's the very first cam cap, which is the very front of the engine, you would start with that and then move your way back and they'll, you'd see a little arrow telling you which direction they go into. So it makes this really, really easy for y'all. Uh, another thing too, you see the two bolts, you pick it back a little bit there, Colton, so they can see, but uh, turn it up. The bottom of these bolts are already coated in oil, so you wanna make sure that you coat them in oil or a molly coat. And again, the reason for this is just like when we put the head studs in, the reason for doing this is when you're torquing it down, it has less resistance and you get a correct torquing value. Uh, again, I'll give you that value once we get close to the end here. So I'm gonna have Colton go ahead and start putting one side on at a time, and we're gonna start with the exhaust. So all of the exhaust cam caps are on. Way to go, Colton, you the man. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start from the center and work yourself out. Now, here's where it gets a little bit more of a finesse thing. You're gonna be doing this, and what you're also gonna be doing is as you're doing that, you're working yourself out, you gotta see which ones are getting the most pressure because this cam is pushing up against these cam caps as you're pushing this down. You can, the possibility is there of snapping these camshafts in half. You have to, you have to, you have to be careful. So well, as you're turning these on, you're making very minute turns, okay? As soon as you feel it start to get a little bit tight, move on to the next one, and then so on and so forth. So Colton, go ahead and start with the center, and we're gonna start working our way out. Again, guys, I'm gonna add music to this, and if I have any issues or if I need to, I'll stop the music and I will tell you guys what went wrong or what Colton needs to do different.
guys. So that side, the exhaust side is now hand tight. Those need to be torqued down to 15 foot pounds then, and there is a torquing sequence for that. But before we do so, we're gonna go ahead and put all the cam caps on the intake side next. And I'm gonna record that here for you also. We're gonna repeat just like we did in the exhaust side. Uh, you're gonna start from the center out. So Colton, go ahead and start putting the caps on. And guys, again, I'm gonna throw music on here. He did a fantastic job. If you guys saw me coach him or you saw my hand in the way, it's because I was saying, hey, be careful. He was, there's a couple spots where he's going a little too tight on. I'm like, hey man, you're leaving too much of a gap. You could crack the cam. Which, just be a little bit more careful. So. Um, I think he did a pretty excellent job. Colton's really listening to me and he's learning fast. So again, I'm gonna shut up now and put some music on. So Colton's got the torque wrench out here. Uh, you're gonna tighten down the cam caps to 15 foot pounds. Right there is the digital torque wrench. Now, to do so, we're gonna start in the center and then work ourselves out. So Colton's gonna start here. Go ahead and it's 15. Remember, they're only 10 millimeters, so they don't need a ton of pressure. There you go. And then repeat that process. And then you're gonna go back and forth. So he's gonna do this one next and then it's gonna go up front. Again, you're alternating here per the book. Now, the front caps, again, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and talk while he's doing this. We're gonna to have to take those off to put seal packing and then put the cam caps on. The reason I haven't done it yet is because we need to check clearances. I don't wanna ruin those seals and stuff. I'm gonna turn this over a couple times and make sure the clearances are right, which I'll also show you in today's video. Okay guys, it's time to do the valve clearance. Now this is where we're hoping, and so is he, that we don't have to buy any shims and we have this clearance right. To do so, I did not purposely, I did not put any of the um, seals in yet and I haven't put the seal pack in that we need to do. And the reason for this is, God forbid we take it out and you would scorch it or score something. 
you don't want that to happen. I also put the gears on because you can bottom these out inside the actual cam itself. There is a pressed in seal inside of there. You don't want to damage. So I put the gears on and then I don't torque these down yet either as we're just using this to spin it around because I need to check for the clearance itself. So we're going to start with the exhaust side here. And if we look at the exhaust side, we have a 10 thou. Okay, can you see that? 0 0.010. That is our clearance. So I'm going to give the camera over here to Colton and I'm going to explain some stuff to you guys. Okay guys, so first thing we're gonna do is you're gonna wanna buy some of these shims. If you don't have these, you wanna buy some, you get an Advanced Auto, AutoZone, O'Reilly's, wherever you're at. And we're gonna start off, ideal is 10,000. So we're gonna start with ideal, which is 0 .010. Now, if Colton comes down here, you'll see the cam lobes. You're gonna wanna have the cam load slightly faced out right now. So if you come over this way, bring the camera towards this direction here, and if you're shooting in, you'll see the base of the lobe itself. So here's your top of your profile. Here's the base of the profile of the cam. From that base of that profile of that cam, we want to have 10 thou clearance. And the reason for this is that is ideal without rubbing and is ideal for out kicking out that shim. That shim that's inside of that bucket could be spit out. We don't want that to happen. So to keep that from happening, 10 thou is ideal. So I'm going to take my shim or take my clearance tool here and make sure, and look at that, 10 thou is perfect there. And dang, perfect there. So Starting off, Colton's gotten very fortunate here. So these first two are good. What we're gonna do next now is we're gonna spin this around some and we're gonna take it to the next ones here. So there we go. So the next ones we're gonna do is this here as we spun it around. These ones here are the next one up on our list. So again, we're gonna start with 10 thou. Again, 10 thou. Man, and it's tight too. So like it takes me a little bit of force to get it through, but like, all right, those two are good. So the first two, and this set are good. All right, Colt, which ones are gonna be the next ones? All right, boy, you're learning. All right, next one's up here. Again, we're gonna check at 10 thou. Man, I swear to God, you're the luckiest SOB on earth. What are the next ones, Colton? Which ones? We already oh. did these, didn't we? Yeah. There's one back there. There you go. Make sure you're looking from the bottom is what you're looking for. So again, 10 thou, good. Oops, this is hitting that. Man, dang it, you're lucky. So good, good. Next set, right here. And good again, so. Good, 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 good. I think there's one we didn't do yet, yep. I wanna make sure. And these ones here. Yep. Colton is officially the luckiest man on earth so far on the exhaust side. So none of those need to be changed. They are tight. Um, now what you would do too, so I'm gonna take it here and add in, you can add in a single Shim, so let's see if I have one here. You can stack them up to create. So let's try and go to the next one here. Whoops. Uh, I'm gonna go click this around. Again, if it goes, oops. If it goes a little bit more or goes a little bit less, it's not gonna hurt anything. You have 2,000, um, you have 2,000s that you can waver on. So at 10,000 is ideal. You can go as low as 8,000 and you go as high as 12,000 for the exhaust side. Uh, the intake side, I think 8,000 is ideal. Let me double check here. Yes, 8,000 is ideal. So 8,000 is ideal. You can go as low as 6,000. You can go as high as 10,000. Anything over that, you need to replace the shim to uh, change the math and make sure that the distance is correct. So again, guys, you wanna make sure you get that spot on. All right guys, so now we are doing the intake side. Eight thou is ideal, so let's start off with eight thousands here on the back, and... Uh-oh. Colton. Colton, buddy. Let's try seven. Nope, let's try six. If it goes below six, guys, I'm, I already told him. Ah, you lucky. Make sure, you're lucky. You're lucky. So, that one's good, so we're gonna go to the next one here. And we'll try 8,000 next spot. There we go. Nope. Let's try 
seven. Nope. Just fit again, six. Click. Tolerances are much tighter on this. So he got lucky again. Let's try the next one. Six fits, so that's good, you're passing, but I wanna see what the actual total is. All right, not that one. And let's try a seven here. Again, man, it's six for everything, man. This side is just really tight. Again, six does fit. Does a seven fit? Seven fits there. That doesn't. That just barely fits. So, you're you're passing here, but just by the skin of your teeth right now, bud. Again, that is the six. I don't even doubt seven will do it. Nope. Mm. Nope. Seven will get through that one, but again, skin of your teeth. This is seven, seven fit. All right, seven fit there. So again, you're good. Let's see if we can get up to an eight on that one. Again, that's ideal. Nope, nope. And the last one. All right. Double check it. And nope. And yep. All right. So guys. Colton is officially very lucky. You only get 2,000 clearance difference, and it works. It is a little bit tighter, but it's within spec. So Colton, you're lucky. We don't have to take this back apart. The only thing we are gonna have to do, we're gonna have to take these uh, the cam gears and stuff, the bolts out. We're gonna have to take these caps off, and we're gonna have to put Toyota FIPG uh, in a couple spots, and I'll show you why. Okay, guys, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the exhaust cap off here first, and he's already got them broken loose. And don't worry, there's other caps are tight on there, so you don't have to worry about the can. The reason we're taking this cap off is we need to put Toyota FIPG, which is a black sealant, uh, to keep it from leaking. If you look in the book, they require you to do this. Now, I've seen some guys say, like, you don't need to. I'd rather be safe than sorry. Colton's already dealing with oil leaks on his daily car. He doesn't want to deal with it again. So if you want, yep, it takes a little bit of... <laughs> I have to pry it up a little bit. There you go. Yep, you can do it by finger. Okay. Now... Let me see the cap. You're gonna put it just around the edge of this. So you come around here and you go right around the edge of this on both sides, just the edge of it. Yep, now go, keep going, yep. Come towards the front here and stop, you're good, stop. Same thing over here. Yep, and come around up to the front and to that corner, done. Yep, now put the cap back on, it's not gonna hurt it. Well, now before we do that though, I wanted to say, sorry, we're gonna go ahead and grab one of the cam seals. Can you show them the part number? So guys, here's the part number for the cam seal that you'll need. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and place this on because it's a lot easier to place it on ahead of time. So this has already got a little bit of oil on it. So if we see here, place it on. And you gently move it back and forth till it gets to the back. Yep, make sure it bottoms out. Yep. All right guys, so now you grab your cam bolt and your cam cap and you go ahead and put that on. And set it on like so. And then start tightening it down and then he will have to go ahead and torque these down again to 15 foot pounds. Let's go ahead. And then you're going to want to go ahead, guys, and torque these down to 15 foot-pounds. Okay, guys, now that everything is torqued down, we've got those uh, torqued down back down to 50 foot-pounds. We've got the seals in, which are behind this cover plate. There's four bolts for this cover plate that you need to put on. So here, 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 and here. Once you put the cover plate on, you can put your cam gears back on. We are reusing our stock cam gears. Most people never utilize aftermarket cam gear, so you see people like, oh, you need to use an aftermarket cam gear. 99% of people never utilize them uh, to advance or retard timing, so I never saw the point for the most part. They do look cool, don't get me wrong, they do look cool, but Colton's not going to utilize them, so we're going to stick with factory ones, and then we're going to put the bolts back in and then torque these down. 
Okay, guys, so before we torque this down here, I wanna see, we've got the 17 millimeter on. You need to put a wrench of some sort that you can get around this giant hex that is built into the cam, whether you have a stock cam or aftermarket cam. You need to put on the hex. Don't just let it rest against the head and torque this down. You can crack the head, so make sure you're pushing against it so you don't do that. We've got this already set, and go ahead and torque it down. There you go. And then we're going to do the other side now. Might have to adjust it some there. Just to make sure it fits over perfectly. Again, same thing. And there you go, torqued down and ready to go. <clears throat> okay guys, you saw we did use the factory cam gears and you got to see us torquing this down to 55 foot pounds. Now, most likely we're gonna either have to modify those cam gears, take them off, or we're gonna have to use an aftermarket gear only for the one side. And the reason for that being, we're gonna have to use something to trigger for the coil unplug because it is a NA head, right? So we don't have cam sensors inside the head built in. Unless you have a VVTI head, this is a non-VVTI head. So we have to use the cam for the pickup. So with coil unplug, we're gonna have to use one of the cams for that. It is what it is, so I have to take that one cam off on the intake side or the exhaust side, whichever, and then adjust it, and then I also have, will have to drill a small hole in that cover plate. So I just want to go ahead and talk on that before I finish out this video. Again, guys, thank you very much. I know this was a long video, so thank you for staying to the very end. Uh, hopefully this is helpful. We're going to keep going with this. Obviously, that was the head. Now up next is the oil pans, and then after that, I'll show you how to time the engine. Then we'll show you installing it, so on and so forth. So guys, thank you very much, and I'll talk to you later.